A typical polymer product contains several additives like plasticizers, fillers, colorants and so on. But plasticizers have played very important role in the growth of plastic industry. Many of the everyday items wouldn't be possible without plasticizers. Plasticizers are colorless low molecular weight compounds that are added to a polymer for mainly two reasons. First, to make the polymer flexible and improve flowability. Second, to meet the demand of the end product's application. Addition of plasticizer molecules into the polymer weakens the intermolecular forces between the polymer chains. As a result, free volume between the polymer chains increases, which allows polymeric chains to move or rotate freely. As a result, polymer so flexibility. Plasticizers are used in a number of plastics. However, almost 90% of all plasticizers are used to make flexible PVC. Without plasticizer, PVC is a hard and brittle material and it is very difficult to process. Rigid PVC is mainly used in pipes, siding and window profile applications. Whereas flexible PVC can be used for many other applications such as sour curtain, vinyl flooring, clothing, bags, flexible plastic tubing, electric wire coating, etc. Common examples of plasticizers are benzoate, orthothalate, terithalate, edipates, phosphates, azylates, civicates, trimilitates, and epoxidized oil. These plasticizers are divided into four families, phthalate, dicarbonate, phosphate, and fatty acid esters. Phthalates are used in certain plastics that needs flexibility like PVC. Dicarbonates are used in PVC when the application need to work in low temperature. Phosphates are used to make a material frame retardant and fatty acid esters are added to rubber and vinyl polymer to improve flexibility. Plasticizers can be broadly classified into two main categories, internal and external plasticizer. Internal plasticizers are copolymers of the monomer of the desired polymer. They are added to the polymer during polymerization process. Internal plasticizers provide flexibility to the polymer by reducing TZ through grafting or copolymerization. The plasticizer forms a chemical bond either with the main chain or attached as a side chain. The most common monomers used as internal plasticizers are vinyl acetate and vinylidene chloride. These plasticizers are in limited use due to their limited availability. The second type of plasticizer is called external plasticizer. External plasticizers are the most important as far as commercial application is concerned. These are low cost chemicals that do not chemically bond to the polymer. They are added to the polymer during extrusion or injection molding process which allow manufacturers to formulate material having varying degree of flexibility and end properties. This type of plasticizer can be further divided into two categories, primary and secondary plasticizer. Primary plasticizers show significantly high compatibility with the polymer resin and therefore impart a high degree of flexibility. They can be used at a very high loading depending upon flexibility requirement. Primary plasticizers can provide desired flexibility by itself, whereas secondary plasticizers cannot be used alone since they have limited compatibility with the polymer resin. Secondary plasticizers are mainly used for cost reduction and low temperature property improvement. The most common primary plasticizers are phthalate compounds and secondary plasticizers are civicate, polyesters and epoxidized oils. Secondary plasticizers have a subset category called extenders. They are commonly employed with primary plasticizers to reduce cost in general purpose flexible PVC. They are mostly low cost oils having limited compatibility in PVC they are added to reduce cost and in some cases to improve fire resistance. Examples of extenders include naphthenic hydrocarbon, aliphatic hydrocarbon and chlorinated paraffins. Plasticizers are widely used additive used in plastic industry, but selecting the right plasticizer for an application is a challenging task. 
selection of plasticizer depends on many factors but the most important of them are plasticizer's compatibility with the base polymer plasticizer's ability to withstand high heat and shear during processing resistance to harsh aging conditions such as uv chemical resistance and end property contributions are also very important parameters for commodity application the cost of plasticizer is also considered if the application area is in water pipe toy food contact or medical related then the plasticizer must have country specific food contact requirement approval so in summary we can say that by choosing the right plasticizer and formulation we can achieve polymer with desired properties but plasticized polymer may not necessarily have combination of the best properties because incorporation of plasticizer into a polymer is a compromise where some of the properties are improved at the sacrifice of other properties with that i would like to end today's video thank you for watching